Is silver about to crash to $16 or boom to $40? So I did this video not too long ago entitled Is Silver About to Crash? And I shared some interesting charts in this video. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description below if you haven't watched it, do so. Um, I think there's some good, uh, valuable information in that. And I guess why I wanted to share this video is, you know, I am not a Johnny come lately in saying that silver could possibly fall. Uh, I did this video and asked that question, is silver about to crash? And a while back, I did this video, silver crashed to $16 and boom to $40. And uh, in this video, I talked about uh, how I see a 1973-74 style event, not just me, but Crestcat Capital. Uh, I shared a video that they did where they also said the same thing, 1973-74, where asset prices uh, get hammered, where the stock, stock market gets hammered. Uh, and you know, CPI remains elevated. And I still see that playing out. And uh, I've got a video coming up shortly uh, looking at the oil and energy space uh, and why no matter what central banks do, unless they put us into a deep, deep depression and, and destroy so much demand, have so much uh, demand destruction, Oil and energy is going to remain very elevated. CPI is going to remain elevated. And you know what? Eventually, uh, a lot of people are going to just flock to gold and silver. But stay tuned for that. That one's coming. Uh, so once again, I'll put a link in the description below to these videos. Um, but there's a few things that we need to pay attention. Yeah. Uh, if central banks continue raising rates and draining liquidity, then there's going to be margin calls and people are going to be selling. So gold and silver will sell off like they always have done. Go back to March 2020. Both gold and silver sold off, not as much as the stock market. But then what happened after that? Silver and gold went on a massive run. On a massive run. But there's a few other things to take into account. So let's have a look at those things now. So there's the politics to contend with as well. Now we know over the last decade, in particular, central banks have been accumulating gold as, as part of their reserves. But with the sanctions on that country up there uh, and their reserves being frozen, that sent shockwaves around the world. It told the world that if you are declared a bad actor because you don't agree with certain things or whatever, then you're Paper reserves can be frozen. And so I think we'll see even more countries uh, accumulating more gold uh, as part of their uh, reserves. And here we see Saudi Arabia. They're planning to establish its own gold refineries. Uh, so rather than shipping uh, their metal uh, overseas to be refined and, and perhaps bring brought back or stored somewhere else, I think you're going to see more and more countries like Saudi Arabia do everything in-house and, and keep uh, real assets uh, as part of their reserve because it's doesn't gold doesn't have counterparty risk. And Ben uh, shared this or tweeted this out with this chart and said, we're never going back to normal. Fed assumes bank reserves will go back down to 40 billion sometime in the 2020s. Good luck. Euro dollar system is broken and I tend to agree and have a look at what the ECB we're gonna have a look at that in a second actually what the ECB have just come out and said and look at what's happening in Japan at the moment and what the Bank of England raised rates by a quarter of a percent 25 basis points while what's their CPI seven eight nine percent and Ben shares another one becoming more and more obvious the Fed is out of options, death by hyperinflation or death by Great Depression. Take your pick. Either way, the Fed's credibility is heavily in doubt. And uh, that's, that's where, where we are. Uh, if they continue raising rates, 
uh, here in Australia, we've got the uh, futures market predicting that rates will be, what, about 4.2%, 4.3% by May, June next year. If that happens, we're seeing mortgage rates around 7%. I'm telling you, we, Australia is going to collapse. Wow. Uh, so they fight inflation and we have a Great Depression like probably bigger than the Great Depression. All central banks very soon get to the point where they go, you know what, we can't raise any more. Otherwise, we're going to have a Great Depression. And guess what? That's when we have the uh, death by hyperinflation. So here from Reuters, uh, Bank of J Japan to maintain ultra low rates sound warning over weak yen. The Bank of Japan is likely to maintain ultra low interest rates on Friday and stress its resolve to support a fragile economy with massive stimulus, a move that may spark a renewed yen fall by highlighting a policy divergence with the rest of the world. And so Japan's got this massive debt bubble, uh, pretty similar around the world. And their Bank of Japan is doing all it can not to allow rates to go up. They're not, in, they're not fighting inflation because they know if they do, they're going to... <laughs> their economy is so fragile. They, we are going into a recession whether we like it or not. The question is, are we going into a deflationary depression because they're, they're raising rates so much and the debt bubble is going to burst? Or do they do what the Bank of Japan are doing and the bank of uh, uh the ecb are doing and caving and then it's the currency uh ludwig von mises said that that uh, a boom created by uh, credit expansion will be followed by a bust uh, and if it's not allowed to bust then it'll be the currency that gets destroyed and gold telegraph nails it here what's happening in japan is scary buying unlimited amounts of bonds and still can't cap yields. So the Japan 10-year yields now at its highest since 2016. And this is a great chart from Tavi. Uh, it shows the S&P 500 real earnings yield. And he says the economy simply cannot handle this level of monetary tightening. Macro imbalances are for worse than any other US inflationary regime we've had. On a real earnings yield basis, the S&P 500 is almost two times more expensive than it was in the 1970s, never mind the debt problem. So are central banks really going to raise rates to tackle this inflation, to destroy demand, is to have this demand destruction, to get CPI back down into that two to three uh, range? Once again, back on Japan, uh, my buddy Tarek says, uh, I'm not going to pretend to know what would happen if yield curve control blows up in the Bank of Japan's face? But if they don't get this yield blowout under control soon, we may all get to find out. So again here from my buddy Tarek, uh, some folks have asked why the RBA can't just keep rates stable while global rates rise. Yields will continue to rise on their own, driving up bank funding costs and eventually mortgage rates. Or if the RBA tried to cap yields like the Bank of Japan, the Aussie dollar would tank. and you know what? Watch this space. Because uh, new modelling that I just saw from the RBA says that uh, with their inc uh, rate increases that housing is going to fall 30% uh, in nominal terms, so in real terms even more, which means to get back to where they need to go, they actually need to rise a, a lot more. Uh, but there is talk from some insiders that some banks, if that's the case, and we see property prices fall that much and we start to see defaults, foreclosures, um, mortgagee uh, repossessions, um, we are going to see some banks perhaps need a bailout where the government and the central bank come in. And at that point, uh, Brent Johnson, he says the Aussie dollar is going sub 40 and here from uh, John Adams uh, retweeting uh, Bloomberg's uh, breaking news where the ECB's governing council will hold an emergency meeting on Wednesday to address the market sell-off as the euro rallies. 
And he says the global bond market is melting down after only four days since the shocking US inflation report. The ECB announced the end of QE only last week, and now they'll be forced to backtrack to stop Italian and Spanish government from experience a sovereign debt crisis. So the ECB are caving. That that before they even started fighting inflation, they've already caved. And here from John again, breaking the European Central Bank announces that it will develop and implement an anti-fragmentation tool that has what no limits. They will also be flexible with ending QE. He says this is a complete surrender. Monetary normalization is impossible. Hyperinflation coming. So he's with Ben Rickett. And New Zealand's a good case to watch because they raised before the rest of us. They're, they're, they're more advanced than us. And the New Zealand economy shrunk by 0.2% versus expectations of 0.6% growth. So this aggressive interest rate increasing uh, increases are tipping New Zealand into recession. Uh, John says the pivot in monetary policy by the RBNZ is coming very soon. So this is the question is, how much more uh, raising of rates will central banks do before that pivot comes? And uh, here, Scott Minard, uh, all risk assets are just a no-go. You don't want a lot of low-quality credit at this point. You don't want stocks. You want to really stay in the high end of the credit spectrum. And when we have a look at the Exeter's Pyramid from John Exeter, the most honest central banker, well, what is the highest quality credit? There's your answer. And also from Scott, a reminder, the US has never had inflation come down by more than two percentage points in a year without a recession. He also says the Fed is going to have a hard time explaining to people that we can go down this interest rate path and not find ourselves in a recession or some kind of financial accident. I think it's inevitable. And here from the real Bond King, Jeff Gunlock, 30-year yield took out the 2018 closing high today, only to powerfully reverse by 25 basis points. This action is called a throwover and often marks an important trend reversal. And back to Scott, if my scenario is correct, which is that the weakening economy is going to catch the Fed off guard, we're sitting at the peak or close to the peak in long-term rates. Our internal models have flipped to favoring long bonds over owning stocks. So you've got the real Bond King and Scott Minard who are now saying that their models, their analysis says that rates are now peaking and perhaps may have flipped that we're going to see a recession and a, possibly some sort of financial accident. And if central banks continue, well, yeah, we're going to have a big deflationary depression. But they're saying, no, central banks are going to cave. And then we're going to basically see uh, central banks destroy currencies. And I'll finish this video with David Brady's tweet. In summary, the best times to buy precious metals and miners follow steep declines. They're oversold. Sentiment is bearish as everyone is throwing in the towel. The bullion banks are neutral to long. Real yields are falling. And Fed policy is on the verge of an about turn. So do I think silver is about to crash to $16 or boom to $40? Well, I think both could happen. Central banks continue to drain liquidity and raise rates. And we're going to see a, a lot bigger falls in asset prices. And we're going to go into a deep recession. Uh, but hey, I welcome it. Bring it on. Bring it on. Uh, at some point, central banks are going to do an about turn on this hawkish policy. Just like the ECB have already caved, just like the Bank of Japan are doing, just like the Bank of England, 25 basis points, while CPI is, what, 8 9%? You're kidding me. New Zealand now moving into recession. 
So I think David sums it up here. Uh, it's why I'm buying a heck of a lot. In fact, I've just invested uh, quite a lot of money in a uh, research uh, piece that uh, a gentleman does in the uh, Australian gold and silver mining and exploration sector. He's the best in the business, and uh, I'm paying quite a bit of money for his analysis because I see huge buying opportunities. As I keep saying, and quoting the great man, Wayne Gretzky, skate to where the puck is going, not to where it's been. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that uh, silver can, will crash to $16? Or do you think it'll boom to $40? What do you think maybe both will happen? Love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit that like button, guys. Really do appreciate it. Take care, and I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut.